Right, it's time to get this show on the road. And we didn't realise it at the time, but we've had a bit of a lucky escape here. Now what they did was the Cistercians, who built it, they put a wall around it. Well, blow me down if that's not an MV200 camper van parked opposite us now. When lunch is involved, we're not fussy. The toilet's bloody mad. It's tiny, isn't it? And look at these are the seats they had to sit in. How much? Welcome back to the channel. Hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. Are you answering the comments? I am. We've had so many comments lately. It's been lovely. Yeah. <laughs> Just reading through them all and answering as many as we can. And everybody coming up with names for the new van. Just reading through all of those and all the lovely comments about Little Red yeah. from the last trip. By now you'll know we've called the van Snoopy. The sun has just peeped out above a cloud. So it's very nice here at this little park up. We're next to a road but it was very, very quiet. You get some lovely views sitting in the back of this van, so I have to keep those windows clean. Right, it's time to get this show on the road. And we didn't realise it at the time, but we've had a bit of a lucky escape here. Car park's just here on the left. This one's going to be a bit tight. This is Byland Abbey and it was founded in 1135. It's near to Thirsk in North Yorkshire and at one time its church was considered one of the finest in Europe. The Abbey has had a turbulent past. There was a devastating fire in 1137. On the 14th of October 1322, Scottish soldiers sacked the Abbey after defeating King Edward II at the Battle of Old Byland. And in 1537, the Abbey surrendered to the Crown and the monks received pensions. It was stripped of its assets and materials and left in ruins. Today, it is maintained by English heritage. Looks like they're either doing renovations or there's uh, some sort of archaeological dig going on at the moment. Because everywhere seems to be covered in plastic. Now what they did was the Cistercians, who built it, they put a wall around it. Yeah. And that's what we call a precinct. And See the top of the hill there? Yeah. The yeah. wall was there. Wow. It was along the tree line there. Yeah. Mm. And two fields that way. Wow. Very large. And you couldn't get in except by that little gatehouse yeah. there, which you probably saw. Yeah. So that's the first important thing. It's the largest in Yorkshire. Byland Abbey has one of the largest Cistercian cloisters in England and by its heyday in the 13th century, it housed 240 monks and lay brothers. The second important thing is the tiles. Have you seen the tiles? Well, they're all covered up. But... Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll be honest, I haven't been for a few yeah. weeks. Yeah, yeah we're having yeah. to cover them up because of the, the yeah. climate change yeah, and rising yeah. water yeah, levels. Yeah, they look magnificent. Yeah, the yeah that's kind of sad, yeah. but the covers will come off yeah. in yeah. summer. Yeah. Well, blow me down if that's not an MV200 camper van parked opposite us now. There's a perfect example of the difference in size between the two vehicles. I knew any car coming over the hill would be forced onto our side of the road. These two walkers are oblivious to the problem that they're causing. By being on that side of the road, they force any vehicle like this one onto our side, which is particularly dangerous on a blind summit. It's a blind summit, isn't it? If I want to be safe, I've got no real choice but to creep up on this until I can get a view. Our park up that we left earlier is now full of horse boxes. So 
so everything's conspired against us so far this morning and I just tried to fly the drone at the Abbey and uh, DJI have obviously changed everything because uh, it wouldn't I wouldn't let me fly more than about 20 feet away from me because I wasn't logged in and all my password and everything wouldn't work and then we started getting blocked in didn't we at the uh, car yeah. park uh, we went to get past them. Well, you don't overtake them on a blind bend, no. that's for sure. All of these horses have come from those horse boxes in the lay-by. Now, I've got to be honest, I'm not looking for any arguments about for or against fox hunting in the United Kingdom. i just like to show you what we see when we're out and about. Thank you very much. I should imagine they're a bit wary of people with cameras for obvious reasons. They're fascinated by the furry wind muff on my microphone. We had a lovely look around Byland Abbey that was really interesting. Much bigger than we were expecting it to be, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, massive. Yeah, amazing place. So now we're off, um, we're heading back up to Northallerton Way. Um, we found a lay-by that looks very enticing. <laughs> We're going to stop off there and have a leisurely lunch before heading to Richmond and we're going to have a look at the castle there. When lunch is involved, we're not fussy. In fact, actually come to sleeping in the van, we're still not fussy. We'll park wherever it's useful. At least we don't have to get out into the mud. That's a real bonus, isn't it? Yeah, just walk through. Yeah. <laughs> A nice little spot by a busy road for our lunch. Not the most peaceful, but we don't care. After walking around the abbey, we've got muddy feet, so we're just having a sweep up of all the mud that we've traipsed into the van. Good idea. Yeah, there's a knack to getting everything out in there. That's the table leg in place. This is the small table. Which we like. Which we like a lot. We're having two smoked mackerel fillets, which are in a piri piri marinade. Mm -hmm. Going to mash them up with some red pepper hummus. Yummy. And have it with some bread. That's the way to do it, hey, bunny. So this pan is uh, quite a bit quieter than Little Red. Obviously, in Little Red, we'd have the roof up and we'd hear a lot more of the road noise. The first mackerel is going in. Mmm. Mm. Wish I'd bought a little red pepper now because that would have gone just right mm. with this, wouldn't it? Yeah, something crunchy. Something crunchy. We're using it all because we don't like things hanging around in the fridge, do we? No. This looks yummy, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. It was quite easy to rustle up. Yeah. See what it's like because we haven't done it before, have we? No. Let's get them a big reaction, see what you think. Yeah, okay. So, what's the hummus? It was just red pepper, wasn't it? Yeah, red, and then all red the pepper. Piri piri is on the mackerel. Let's see what she thinks. Mm. Watch the face, folks. Mm. Mm. Is it all right? Mm. Good. I thought it tastes nice. Let's see. That was something different. We'll have to do variations on that. Yeah, you could do <coughs> do it with chicken, or you could well, use guacamole. Guacamole. All sorts of hummusy type things. Mm. 
Charlie Brown will now read a joke from the joke book. These are so bad. <laughs> Dog jokes. Yeah. Right, what did the cowboy say when the bear ate Lassie? I don't know. Well, doggone. You're right, that is bad. Okay, that's enough for today. That's more than most could bear, I think. We're heading north. Well, that lunch went down really well. Yeah, it's tasty. It wasn't the most scenic of spots right by the busy road, but the food was very good. So now we're heading up the A1M, heading north, and our next stop will be Richmond. It's past Catterick Racecourse. So this is the town of Richmond, and we've managed to find a parking space for the van. Looks like we got a little folly here just behind the car park and that is Richmond Castle. Uh, well it said machine not in use so mm. I've used Ringo but then of course I had to add the new vehicle because oh, I've yeah. <laughs> never paid with that before. I wish there was just one parking app instead of half a dozen but then again we all know what can go wrong when there's no competition. If you like steep hills then Richmond is a good place to come. It started as a market town in North Yorkshire, founded in 1071 by Alan Rufus, a Breton nobleman on lands granted by William the Conqueror. The cell block is closed. The cell block, it has a lot of graffiti from the 19th and 20th centuries, which is very delicate, which they want to protect, so they're not opening it to the public. I guess we won't be able to scratch our names in the wall then. I wish they would invent a device that you could wear and go back in time and see them building these places. Don't fall in. St <laughs> Nicholas's Chapel. They finished building the castle in 1086. Tiny, isn't it? And look at these are the seats they had to sit in, formed by pillars and arches. See the better on this side. Look. Oh, yeah. Just sitting here. Well, not very comfortable. <laughs> I don't think it was meant to be comfortable, was it? No. And Charlie into the latrine. Don't get your feet muddy. Mm. Don't any muddy footprints in the van. Oh yeah. Well, there's the latrine there. Just the hole. You can sit on this one now. No. <laughs> it's like a long drop dunny. A long drop dunny. Mm. Don't fall down the drain. <laughs> so this was originally built so that the Normans could maintain control of the north of England and during the First World War it was a prison for conscientious objectors. What is this place? It's a tower that held the private latrine <laughs> of the castle owner. The toilet bloody mad. We can just hear the river swale flowing down below. I wonder if it used to be this uneven in the past. Yeah, or wonder whether they, you know, it was much smoother to walk on. It's very uncomfortable to walk on. I wouldn't mind betting that when it was put down, it was quite smooth. Because you wouldn't leave them purposely higgledy-piggledy like this, would you? Now this is a nice spot to take the weight off your feet. Nice to sit down, isn't it? Nice to get the sun on your face. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. See, this is why I wear a peak. Mm. Then again, I suppose you wouldn't get the sun on your face, would you? No. 
we're going up the main tower. See what's up here. Uh, oh. <laughs> we're at the top now. Yeah. Hit that like button. Say thanks to Charlie Brown for taking you all the way to the top. The view over the town. This is the view looking east. You can hear the river rapids that are making all that noise. And see the old railway station. It's quite a view from the very top, looking down to the main market square. Amazing to think this place is still standing after 954 years. Look in there, bunny. Should we go in there? Can we have a look? Yeah. Come on, Ed. Let's go. Have a I think the parking ticket is about to run out. So you paid by Ringo, didn't you? I did. I put two hours on. Yeah. So we've done nearly an hour. Now we're going to look around the town and this market. Sort of might want a drink and a rest as yeah. well, so okay. can extend the You might want is sneaky code for I want. Yes. Now, if you're an avid reader, this little market is an absolute gem because there's a stall here that has all the latest books at very cheap prices, and Carol was in an element. Trouble was, Carol didn't know what she'd read and what she hadn't. Anyway, I had my eye on a traditional atlas. Time to have a look round the town now. We met a couple of subscribers here, but we're so sorry that we didn't ask for your names. Let us know in the comments if it was you. Snug as a bug in a rug. Oh. Dingly Dell, isn't it? Welcome to Jack the Ripper Street. We've just come down here because apparently there's a little theatre here, look. I want to try walking down here when it was been snowing or something, no, would you? Oh, I see. I see, yeah. How treacherous this was I wonder if the council grit it. Mm. Should do, shouldn't they? If they... Yeah. Not many people walking. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've seen a lot today, but we need a park up now. farm shop I've ever seen that was. We've got about an hour's drive now to Kendall and we're heading for the Kendall Cricket Club because we know you can stay the night there. We spent the night there in Red Camper on our very first trip over four years ago. They're charging now £5 a night for small camper vans and £10 a night for motorhomes. Six twenty-five North Road. It's a low bridge. Four point four meters. I think we just manage it. One of the priorities when we get back home is to really zero in on all the noises, creaks, and groans from this van. A lot of it is down to the way we've got things packed and the sort of things we've got with us that we wouldn't normally have. No idea why we picked this route because it's quite challenging, especially as it's getting dark now. Well, we arrived. It's late and we're hungry, so we're going to let someone else do the cooking tonight. Watch out. Ah, oh, just stopped talking. Oh. <laughs>
Never send to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. Do we need a nice lamp for the van? The van. Or maybe an octopus. octopus. <laughs> it's very nice, well, isn't it? Octopus, bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> If it says added with fresh shredded ginger, tomatoes, crushed dry red chilli and coriander, that sounds hot. I'm having my usual chicken dan sack. I'm going to try culture naan and an onion bhaji. I'll try korai then. I'm going to have a korai chicken mm -hmm. and a sagalu and a peshwari naan. Yum. Do you ever have poppadoms and pickles and then regret it because you're too full for the main course? Yummy. Well, if I'm honest, I think this restaurant is cashing in a little bit knowing that people in camper vans are parked up not too far away. A little bit pricey for what we had. Well, we hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, please uh, hit the like button, subscribe and share us with your friends. And we'll see you in the next one. See you soon.